Welcome to the GSN Newsroom. Today I'm talking to Jamil Sader, the CEO of Monumental Minerals, which is developing raw materials for the global energy transformation. They have a rare earth project in Mexico and two lithium projects in Chile. The company trades under the symbol MNRL on the Venture Exchange. Welcome, Jamil. Thank you very much, Guy. Pleasure to be here. Before we get into the news, let's back up a second. Can you tell me about the demand drivers for lithium? Why is that an important mineral? Two letters, Guy. EVs. Um, EVs are more prevalent on the roads these days than they were even a few years ago. Um, and they require almost entirely, every one of them, lithium batteries. And so that's where most of the lithium is, is going these days. Um, what is the price of lithium been doing over the last 24 months? Uh, well, <laughs> it's gone up by nearly 800 percent. So two two years ago, 24, maybe 36 months ago, it was sitting around $10,000 for a ton of LCE. Now you're up around 80,000 US dollars per ton. It's, it's, it's quite remarkable. Let's talk about the supply side. What role does Chile play in lithium production? Chile has more lithium that's known than any other country in the world. Let's get into today's news out of the Turi project. Can you tell me about that? We have an agreement in place with the Aquina Turi community to carry out exploration activities, including drilling. We're absolutely thrilled about this. You know, we're we're thankful for the community granting us access, and you know, we're we're really grateful that we've had such a great community to work with. They've been um, they've been exce exceptional when we've been talking with them, and you know, we are looking forward to uh, to a very long relationship with them. So, Jamil, now you have, as it were, the blessing of the local community. What happens next? Do you need to apply for permits? Uh, there's no permits per se. But what we what we do have to do is submit a package to uh, the Chilean uh, mining authority. It's called CERNACAMIN. That's where that's the uh, mm -hmm. the acronym. Um, so we submit a, a proposal to them and we tell them exactly what we're going to do. Um, and uh, then we go forward. There's no real uh, permits per se. They just want to know what we're doing, where we're doing it, who we're doing it with and when. Okay. What is the timeline then for drilling? Um, now that we have this agreement in place with the community, mm -hmm. our timeline is within the next month. So within the next 30 days or less. Um, we're at the final stages of, uh, of getting an agreement with a drilling contractor. Um, that should be very forthcoming in, in, the, next, uh, in, in the next few days. Uh, and then following that, we uh, it's just a matter of the drill contractor mobilizing mm -hmm. and um, and us just getting the drill pads ready to go. Jamil, I saw in the press release uh, that the Aquina community anticipates a long lasting relationship with Mon Monumental. How long is the current agreement in effect? The current agreement is in effect for this drilling program. Uh, right now, we have two drill holes. Um, that are are planned. Tell me more about these two holes. How deep are you going to go? What are the anticipated costs? And do you have the cash? Yeah, a very good question. So uh, hole depths will be up to about 500 meters each. Yeah. And that's based again on the geophysics that we we have. The cost, it's a, it's a bit on the expensive side. So, you know, compared with hard rock drilling. So we're looking at all in costs somewhere around 550 or $600 US per meter. And uh, it's a bit surprising. Uh, coming from from hard rock, where costs are, are less than half of that. But on the positive side, you don't need as many holes to come up with a, mm. a, a resource. Uh, so that's that's the, the benefit. We do have the cash to to carry out this work. So we um, you know we are turnkey ready to go. Jamil, the mining industry contributes about fifteen percent of the GDP of Chile, so it's considered a mature mining jurisdiction. But they do have a lot of elections, and there's recently been a constitutional vote. So, can you give me a bit of an update on the regulatory environment currently in Chile? Yes. So that constitutional vote was September fourth of last year. And it was resoundingly defeated by the uh, the general public. The government has gone back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. um, they have 
brought in people from both sides of the aisle. So left of center, right of center, people from industry, specifically mm -hmm. from the mining industry to help come up with something that is more inclusive, that is more complete and, and kind of addresses um, more people's concerns. You spend a lot of time in Chile. Has, has operationally, has your business changed since the election and the vote? There really hasn't been any change for us. Chile is a, a great country. It's a, it's a country that, that is very much enshrined in rule of law. But SQM, yeah. um, one of the largest miners of, of lithium, and that's a Chilean company, contributed more to the public treasury than Codelco did last year. And those sort of things mm -hmm. are really starting to hit home. And a lot of the, the general public, uh, politicians, are starting to realize that wow, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of money to to be made here, um, as long as we do it right. Jamil, thank you very much for your time today. I look forward to following the drill program in the Salada Tori and continuing to follow your story. Thank you very much, Guy. Really appreciate your time.